Okay, let's talk about the MDDP elementary algebra readiness test. And if you're watching this video, I assume that you are a college student in the state of California. So that's fantastic. I'm actually from California myself, went to college out there. This is an uh, excellent experience. Born and raised there as well. Don't live there now, but uh, travel back and forth. Um, uh, from the state of Florida actually so uh, definitely miss California so anyway uh, California uses this MDTP uh, readiness assessment for mathematics so uh, depending on you know what particular test you're going to be taking you're trying to kind of place into for this uh, particular example elementary algebra now there's different levels of mathematics you can try to place into but elementary algebra to place into elementary algebra for the um, in terms of the MDTP exam, you pretty much have to really know your like algebra one. Okay, so um, you certainly have to have already. Uh, don't let this word elementary kind of trick you. They're kind of already expecting you to already know a lot of algebra. So with that being said, I got a nice little practice problem here for you. But before we get going. A little bit about myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabit Class Math, a middle school and high school math teacher. I've been teaching many, many, many years. And I've done uh, really a lot uh, in terms of test preparation, uh, developed some really fantastic courses. I actually have an MTTP elementary algebra uh, test prep course, extremely comprehensive. I'm going to leave the link to that course in the description of this video. You can check that out if you like. But with that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at this practice problem. Okay, so uh, you pretty much should be able to handle a problem like this. I would classify this as a pretty fundamental, basic algebra one type problem. So if you're, you know, expect to do well and place into elementary algebra level in college, you should be able to handle this pretty easily, hopefully. But no problems. If you can't figure it out, I'm going to actually solve it. We'll talk about it. But it's just use this as a pop quiz, kind of an, an initial gauge of your current math skills, okay? All right. So with that being said, if you want to go ahead and pause the video and give it a try, that would be good. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and pa um, actually solve this now, okay? Then we'll talk about it. So first thing is, is I want you to notice what are we dealing with? Well, this right here, okay, we have an equation, right? And then we have this right here. So hopefully you recognize this is what we call a quadratic equation. Okay, it's a quadratic equation, meaning that it's, well, I don't want to get too technical right now, but it means that it's a polynomial of degree two, right? This little two up here. So it's a quadratic equation, and it means that we're always going to have two solutions. So there's going to be two solutions to this uh, problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and and talk about how to solve this specific problem. But in terms of a quadratic equation, there's all types of quadratic equations you'll need to know how to solve. Uh, this one is very easy, but there definitely are more challenging quadratic equations, and we need different tools to solve them. Some of the tools that we use is like the quadratic formula, factoring, taking the square root of both sides, completing the square. So you can kind of get my drift, right? Uh, there's a lot of, you know, a lot to know just about quadratic equations, let alone a lot of other stuff you need to know in uh, for algebra one. Okay, so let me go ahead and just solve this. So the first thing we want to do is kind of we want to isolate this x squared part. We want to get that on one side of the equation, and then get all the like just one number on the other side. Okay, so that's what I'm going to try to do here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add one to both sides of the equation, just like this. And I get 2x squared is equal to 16. All right, so what do I do now? We're, again, remember, I want to isolate this x squared, and I'll tell you why here in a second. So how can I get the x squared by itself? OK, well, I could simply just divide both sides of the equation by 2. And now I have x squared is equal to 16 divided by 2 is 8. All right, so now we have a, a super simple quadratic equation. Now, how do I solve for x? Well, if I take the square root of both sides, I can get x is equal to the square root of 8. But I told you there was two solutions, right? Remember, when you take the square root of a real number, a positive real number, you're going to have plus and minus 8. All right, so here, our solutions would be x is equal to plus or minus 8. And now, let me give you kind of another little quiz, if you will. I can write this square root of 8 better. How can I write this in a more simplified manner? Okay. 
Well, you could do this this way. The square root of 8, the square root of 8 is equal to 4 times 2, right? 4 times 2 is 8. Okay, 8 and 4 times 2 is 8. Well, there's a property of square roots that we can kind of pull these guys apart so that it can be the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. Okay, now I'm bringing this up because you may not see this, let's say on a multiple choice exam, and you get this as your answer. Well, you're looking to select the right answer. You feel confident about, hey, I got the I got the right answer, but you don't see it in one of your choices. That's because you may not have it correctly fully simplified. This is definitely not fully simplified. It's kind of like reducing your answer. Let's say you had a fraction that was like 10 over 30, and you're looking for 10 over 30 as your answer. Well, you got to simplify it to one third, right? So same thing here. So I'm going to I'm simplifying the square root of 8. So let's go back to this, right? The square root of 8 is equal to the square root of 4 times 2. And I could pull these apart. And now, notice I can simplify the square root of 4 as 2 times the square root of 2. Because the square root of 4 is 2. Okay, and we're going to multiply that by this uh, square root of 2. But again, it's not just 2. It's plus or minus 2. So plus or minus 2 times the square root of 2. This is our answer. And let's just break this out to be very specific, okay? One solution is the plus square root of 2. So that's 2 times the square root of 2. And our second solution is the negative portion of it, negative 2 times the square root of 2. Okay, so these are our two solutions to this quadratic equation. This is actually a plus and this is a minus, but uh, we generally just write it just like this, plus and minus. We don't break them up, but I'm doing this specifically here to kind of highlight the head, we do actually have two specific uh, solutions, uh, unique solutions to this quadratic equation. Okay, so if you got this right, you totally understood everything, and you're like, yeah, I got this, that was no problem, then that's, that's excellent, okay? Now, if you kind of understood it, that's pretty good, and if you're totally lost, well, at least you know where you stand, okay? Um, what you need to do well on, on this MTTP elementary uh, algebra exam is to review. Even if you did well in math, it doesn't make a difference. you got to be like up up to speed, you know, uh, get your math skills really current and ready, okay? So you can do well. And you want to do well on this so you can place it into the right course, and uh, if you do place in the right course, be ready to do, you know, excellent in that course. Okay, you don't want to go in and start place into a course and not be really, truly ready for it. Then you're going to struggle, right? So that's not good either. Okay, so let's go and wrap up this video. So, um, if you like my teaching style, again, I have a really comprehensive, great uh, MDTP elementary uh, algebra test prep course. I'm going to leave the link again in the description of this video. I've been on YouTube for uh, over 12 years, the time of this video. I literally have hundreds and hundreds of videos on my channel that can help you out. So hopefully you, and I'm posting all the time, so hopefully you consider subscribing and check that out. Hey, if you enjoyed the video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up. And leave me some feedback. What school are you going to um, in California? Are you going to a UC school, Cal State school? I'm not sure if the private schools in California use the MDTP. Not sure about that, but definitely the state schools and the UC schools uh, use them. So. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your education uh, career. You know, this is a time where you're really committed to working hard to get your particular degree or certification or whatever you're, you're going for. Okay, but the whole key is, you know, you have to work hard in college, no doubt about that. But it definitely, you know, will pay off, um, you know, when you get past all your initial education goals. So with that being said, keep working hard. Thank you for your time and have a great day.